I'm a researcher in psychology, and after I finished my training, I worked with two populations, with children, um, children in, from different backgrounds and with different uh, talents, and I worked with brain damaged patients, patients who were once okay, but who suffered a stroke or trauma or missile wound or some uh, a, a tumor, some kind of brain damage. And so in the morning I'd work with these patients, and in the afternoon I'd work with children. And what struck me was when you have brain damage, the single most important thing is where the brain damage is. Is it in the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere? Is it uh, toward the front or toward the back? Is it superficial or deep? And depending on where you have the brain damage, you have different strengths and weaknesses. You might lose your language, you might lose your musical ability, you might lose your ability to find your way around, and so on. Similarly with kids, I found some kids were good in music, some kids were good in art, some kids were good in athletics, some kids were very good at convincing you of things, some kids would do very well in learning foreign languages but couldn't do math, some kids were great in science but couldn't analyze poetry. And I was just noticing this and was interested when I was surprised that somebody could do something but couldn't do something else or vice versa. So this was all swirling around in my mind and then I had the opportunity to put my observations together into some kind of a book. And at a certain point it struck me that there was something fundamentally wrong with the word intelligence. Namely, there was only one way to be smart, and we could find out how smart you were by giving you a test for an hour called an IQ test. And my big insight was that um, IQ testing and smart was a pretty good predictor of how you would do in a certain kind of school, the kind of non-religious, non-memorizing school that we have in the West, in the United States and Europe. But once you got away from that certain kind of school to other kinds of schools, or how people did well when they left school and became salespeople or entrepreneurs or political leaders, that the IQ test and the single notion of intelligence didn't get you very far. And what I did in my book, Frames of Mind, which was published in the early 1980s, was to pluralize the word intelligence, making it intelligences, and try to describe what are the several human capacities which we all have, but we differ in which intelligence is strong, which one is average, and which one is not very good. And the book got a lot of attention when it was published, and interestingly, the people who found it most interesting were not other psychologists, but educators. And that catalyzed a turn in my own life toward working more in education and less in psychology in a strict sense. Well, I think the main findings have been that you can adduce evidence for a number of different intelligences. And the way that you test this is to see whether if a person is good in something, they're necessarily going to be good or bad in something else. And as long as the correlation is high, then you assume it's a single intelligence. So if, for example, um, being able to speak well and write well are very similar, then you call that a single intelligence. But if your ability to write has nothing to do with your ability to speak, then those would be separate intelligences. When you ask what's been the outcome, I think the principal outcome has been a practical one, namely schools all over the world, educators all over the world, have found these ideas very useful to them, and so they've developed curricula and pedagogy and even assessment, which is oriented toward different intelligences. And if we think now about the digital media and the capacity of computers to present visual things, musical things, um, um, spatial things, and so on, you can have a quite a multiple intelligences education just from uh, a computer. And so that's very useful for a time when we're trying to see which things we can present digitally and which things one has to be present you know, in person. I don't think you can do much to develop bodily intelligence sitting in a computer, but you can do a lot to develop musical or mathematical intelligence.